Well, welcome to worship uh, here at St. John in this way this week. We're glad to have you with us as we worship the Lord our God. Uh, today is the last Sunday in November, but it is also the first Sunday in the season of Advent. We're glad to have you with us as we worship our God, hear his words, sing his praises on uh, this wonderful day. So we do pray you had a blessed Thanksgiving, and uh, we also pray that you're excited as we spend these next four weeks getting ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, but also we spend these four weeks preparing ourselves for the day when he will return, and uh, we'll be focusing on that again through the season of Advent. Uh, as we prepare to get into worship today, as always, we, pr we invite you to do a couple of things uh, before we get into worship. So if you have not yet done so already, we invite you to go uh, to our website, stjohnwoodbury.org, and grab a PDF of the bulletin so you can follow along with the order of service and so that you can sing along uh, with the hymns today. Uh, likewise, if you have not yet done so, we invite you to grab a PDF of the What's Happening. Uh, there you'll be able to find... Let's come up here at St. John, but also you can read uh, the paragraph overview for today's service as well as find the sermon outline for today if you would like to take notes or track along with the sermon. Uh, today, with it being the first Sunday in Advent, we begin a new sermon series that we'll be going through over the next four weeks. And the title of this series is called An Old Testament Christmas. And so with each of these Sundays, we're going to focus on the Old Testament reading and how they foretell the coming of the Messiah, the birth of Jesus Christ. And so our central point of the week, which you, can be, uh, which you can find on the PDF of your What's Happening, says, Jesus humbled himself to be born in order to be our perfect king. As our perfect king, he is righteous and always does what is good and just. He is also our king who saves us and watches over us. Again, we're glad to have you with us as we worship the Lord our God, and we begin that worship as we sing together our opening hymn, O oh Lord, how shall I meet you? Uh, 
On this, the first Sunday in Advent, we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord says, I will fulfill the promise I made to the houses of Israel and Judah. We thank you, O Lord. The Lord says, my righteous branch will cause justice and righteousness to spring up. We adore you, O Lord. The Lord says, you will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. We praise you, O Lord. The Lord says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. We worship you, O Lord. As we do each year during the season of Advent, we spend a moment lighting our Advent wreath. And this year, as we... Uh, light our Advent wreath. We sing together, and we invite you again to sing along uh, with this tune that, again, you can find on the PDF of your uh, worship bulletin. We sing together uh, the song, Candles Burning Warm and Bright, as we light our candle of hope. burning warm and bright hearts are glowing with delight he brings us hope peace joy and love he brings salvation through his blood in this time of advent cheer help us Lord Worship continues as we pray. Let us pray. O Lord, let the lighting of this, a- of this candle signify that you are the light that shines in all the darkness of our lives. As we wait, watch, hope, and pray, guide us all to reflect your light and let it shine through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue as we confess our sins and hear the good news of forgiveness. Having emerged from the waters of baptism as God's new creation in Christ, we confess our sins to God and one another. Forgive us, Lord, for times when hope was lost and moments when we never thought to trust, for times when we despair and forget that you are where all joy and truth have met. Forgive, forgive, forgive us all our sins and help us hope and trust you without end. Brothers and sisters, hear the good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our worship continues with a reading of God's word. The Old Testament reading for this first Sunday in Advent is from Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 through 16. The prophet writes, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. The Apostle Paul writes, 
How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy we have in the presence of God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. Now may the God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ clear the way for us to come to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this first Sunday in Advent is according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke writes, There will be signs in the sun, moon and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great, great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. He told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and also the trees. When they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. But always, or be always, on the watch, and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen, and that you may be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our worship continues as we sing together our hymn of the day, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Bye. 
Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the different seasons of the year, how you allow us to experience uh, spring and summer and uh, winter and fall, uh, that you've built these seasons into creation. And Lord, within the church, you've also created and given us these seasons. So Lord, as we enter into this new season of Advent, we thank you for this time of waiting, this time of preparation, and also this time of prophecy. And as we look at how your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, came to fulfill what was told generations beforehand, as we look at him and see him as the fulfillment of everything that was written in the Old Testament, Lord, as we see him as the Messiah King, as we look at all these things, especially today, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts would be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our God, our Rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I mentioned this last week, so again, if you uh, worship with us, whether in person or online last week, you might remember what I mentioned, that officially today, we can say, Happy New Year. So, Happy New Year. We are officially into a new year in the church calendar. With this, uh, the beginning of the season of Advent, we head into this new liturgical year. And Advent is a very special time of year. It's a beautiful time of year, and within the church calendar, it has multiple emphases. Uh, there is an author, his name is uh, Michael Ford. He, he wrote a great book on uh, the different cycles, the different parts of the church year. And in his book, he writes this about this season of Advent. He says, derived from the Latin root, Advent means coming or arrival. Lasting only four weeks, it is traditionally a season of quiet and joyful expectancy. Advent has a twofold character, a time of preparation for the festival of the Nativity when the first coming of God's Son to the world is recalled, and a period of reflection pointing us to Christ's second coming at the end of time. This is a season for prophecy, calling us to conversion, preparation, and a constant sense of watchfulness. In light of these words, and especially that, that focus that this is in part a season of prophecy, we're going to be spending our Sundays here in the season of Advent, going through a sermon series, as I mentioned at the beginning of the service, called an Old Testament Christmas. And so on each one of these Sundays, we're going to focus on the Old Testament reading each week. And we're going to look at what the prophets said. What, what these words meant to their original hearers, but also how each one of these prophecies were ultimately fulfilled in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, it's, it's rather fascinating that, that really ever since Christ came, you know, ever since the early church, uh, there's been a lot of questions about the relationship between the Old Testament and the New Testament. And unfortunately, over the course of that time, over the course of the last 2,000 years, there have been many people who have tried to divide the two, who have tried to separate the Old Testament and the New Testament. In fact, some have gone so far as to get rid of or try to get rid of the Old Testament altogether. In fact, if you go back all the way even into the early uh, to mid-100s AD, uh, there was a heretic, and his name was Marcion. And Marcion and his followers proposed a teaching that today is known as Marcionism. And in this teaching, this heresy, they say that the God of the Old Testament is incompatible with the God of the New Testament. So the God of the Old Testament is to be uh, disregarded. In fact, the whole Old Testament needs to just be forgotten and not used in any way, shape, or form. Now obviously that is not what we believe at all. In fact, we believe, teach, and confess that the whole Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, is the inspired and inerrant Word of God. 
And likewise, we believe that the whole Bible, the whole of Scriptures, the Old Testament and the New Testament, is all what we call Christocentric. That everything in God's Word, everything in the Bible, everything you encounter in the Scriptures ultimately points to Jesus Christ. That the Old Testament foreshadows the day when the Savior would come, when Jesus would arrive. And likewise, the New Testament is all about how Jesus has come and what he has done through his life, death, and resurrection, what he has done through his ministry, his teachings, his works. In fact, we're given insight into this truth in the book of Hebrews, again, about how the whole Bible, including the Old Testament, is about Christ and how all of it is God's Word. Hebrews uh, chapter 1 verses 1 through 3 say this in the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe the son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being sustaining all things by his powerful word After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. And so as we focus on how the whole Bible, including the Old Testament, is God's Word and focuses on Christ, today we start by looking at our Old Testament reading from the book of Jeremiah. Now Jeremiah was one of what is called the major prophets. Again, he has a very large book. Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel are called the major prophets. And Jeremiah was a prophet to the southern kingdom, that is to Judah, in the late 600s B.C. into the early 500s B.C. And if you're familiar with your Old Testament history, then you know that this was a very tough time, a rough time, a very bad time for the people of God, for the people of Judah. This was a time when Babylon had come to power. And this was a time where Babylon was taking over most of the known world at the time. And in fact, when we get to the turn of the centuries, or around 600, is when we have the conquest of Jerusalem. When Jerusalem fell to Babylon, we have the first deportation of the Israelites to send into exile in Babylon. And all of this was culminated Excuse me, all of this found its culmination in about 586 to 587 B.C., when Babylon finally destroyed Jerusalem, destroyed the temple, and took the last of the exiles off to exile to live in Babylon. And Jeremiah, as you look at his writings, he is often called the weeping prophet because he perpetually points out the people's sin to them. He's perpetually showing the people that they are disobeying God and his word. He is perpetually warning them that if they don't change their ways, that God is going to punish them. He he perpetually reminds them they need to repent, and he is perpetually ignored. You go through the whole book of Jeremiah, and he is constantly laughed at, mocked, ridiculed. Nobody listens to him. And yet, even in the midst of the people's sin, even in the midst of their disobedience, even in the midst of the call to repent, to return to God, even in the midst of their rejection of God, God gives to Jeremiah not just a message of destruction, not just a message of judgment, but also a message of hope to share with the people of God. You know, for for those who heard Jeremiah's message, those who heard his message to repent, those who would later read his words while living in exile, while, while living under the judgment of God because of their disobedience, for all of these people, everything, everything was bad. Because of their sin, they were receiving what was due them. Judgment, punishment. They lost their land. They lost their homes. They were strangers living in a strange land. They were exiles living in the midst of Babylon. They had lost everything. Life as they used to know it was long gone. And yet, in the midst of this, 
in the midst of their punishment because of their idolatry, because of their disobedience, again, God comes to them with a word of hope for the future. Listen again to our Old Testament reading for t- uh, from today, from Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 and 16. It says, in the, uh, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. See, for the people of God who heard Jeremiah's words of warning, those living in exile, Living in Babylon, these words from Jeremiah are words, or were words of hope, of encouragement, that one day they would get to return home. That that one day they would be back in their homeland. That they wouldn't be strangers in a strange land. They would no longer be exiles. They would be living in their homeland in Jerusalem. And they would be living under the reign of the perfect king. That this branch, this righteous branch from the line of King David, who would rule and reign with peace, with justice, with righteousness. They would experience the fullness of that reign. Again, a life of peace, safety, security, salvation, prosperity, goodness. In the midst of their darkest times, God comes to them through the prophet Jeremiah and says, things are bad now because of your sin, but one day I will restore you. One day you will live under the perfect king, this shoot, this branch from the line of David. But the big question for the people was, when? And when is this king going to show up? When will this all take place? When do we get to go home? When will we experience the fullness of what this king will do for us? When will we get to experience peace and justice and righteousness and safety and security and salvation? I want us to compare two passages that give us a clue as to when this Messiah King, this branch from the line of David would come forth. First, listen to what Jeremiah writes just before our reading for today. Okay, Jeremiah 33, verses 12 through 13 says, This is what the Lord Almighty says. In this place, desolate and without people or animals, in all its towns, there will again be pastures for shepherds to rest their flocks. In the towns of the hill country, of the western foothills, and of the Negev, in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem, and in the towns of Judah, flocks will again pass under the hand of the one who counts them says the Lord. In other words, what he's saying is right now, because of their judgment, because uh, life in Jerusalem and all Judah is desolate, there are no flocks. There are no shepherds. Everything has been taken away. Everything has been destroyed because of their judgment. But he says one day those things will return. The shepherds will return. The sheep will return as a sign of peace and safety and security. And then we flip ahead to the second passage, Luke Chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. This is what Luke writes. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. So when would this righteous branch show up? When the shepherds showed up. And what happened when the shepherds showed up? The angels told them, The king is here. The king that 
Jeremiah prophesied about, that righteous branch from the line of David who would bring righteousness and justice and peace and safety and security and salvation, he's here. And he's just been born. I love this author, the way he connects the dots. His name is Philip Ryken. He says, The Christmas story in the Gospel of Luke fulfills these promises. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Exactly. Just as Jeremiah had promised. The king came when there were shepherds in the hills, giving rest to their sheep. About 600 years after this prophecy was first written after these first words of hope were given to the people Jesus showed up the Messiah King arrived this King who would come to restore everything to God's people this King who would come to again bring righteousness and justice and peace and safety and security and salvation but he would not do it by sitting on an earthly throne and ruling as an earthly king. He would accomplish this by being born as a baby in a manger in a little town in the middle of nowhere called Bethlehem. He would do it not through power and through might. He would not do it through force, but he would do it through service, through humility, through sacrifice. And my prayer for us as we celebrate Advent is that we would see Jesus as the fulfillment of this prophecy. We would see Jesus as the Messiah King. The King that Jeremiah spoke of. That King who came to give not just the people of Judah, but to come to give to us righteousness and justice. To give us peace and joy, and safety, and security, and above all, salvation. That we would see him as the Messiah King, who gives us all these things, because he was born to die, so that we might live. May God bless us this Advent season, as we worship this righteous branch, from the line of David, our Lord, our Savior, our Messiah, our King, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that your word, all of your word, tells us the great news of Jesus, the fulfillment of prophecy, the King who was to come, the one who gives all people everywhere hope. Lord, allow us to rejoice Allow us to be filled with peace and comfort as we rejoice in our Savior, our Lord, the one who was born for us, the Messiah who came, that righteous branch. We pray all this in his name. Amen. At this time, our worship continues as we respond to God's word by affirming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We say together our creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with our November verse of the month. This is the last Sunday of the month, so the last time that we will share this verse together. Uh, again, hopefully throughout this month, uh, you've been able to internalize this portion of Scripture and take it to heart. So again, Philippians chapter 4 Verses 6 through 7, we say together, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Our worship continues at this time with the gathering of our offerings. As a reminder, there's a couple ways to support the ministry here at St. John. You can go online to our website, stjohnwoodbury.org. The far right tab is the Give tab, and you can follow those instructions. Or you can mail in your offerings to the church office, and we do collect that mail daily. Again, we thank you for your generosity and your faithfulness to the ministry that God has called us to here at St. John in Woodbury. We continue our worship with our congregational prayers. As always, you can find the full names of those that we mentioned in our prayer list on the PDF of your What's Happening. We do want to add a couple of prayer requests today. We're going to pray for Teddy Engelhart, uh, who is a, a little child um, and uh, related to uh, Mary Jo, uh, who is uh, currently battling COVID, and we pray that uh, he and his whole family would heal up soon. And we also want to pray for Holly Lewis and the rest of the family at the death of Holly's father, Bruce Dahlberg. Uh, we pray that God would grant them his peace during this difficult time. We pray. As we prepare our hearts and minds for Christ's coming, we turn to the Lord in prayer. O day spring from on high, come to the aid of all who are in need. As you humbly entered this world as a vulnerable baby, help all of us to enter humbly the lives of those who are sick, facing surgery, or dying, to offer comfort and hope. From our midst, we especially pray for Teddy, for the family and friends of Bruce Dahlberg, for Ray, Lisa, Douglas, Finley and Balin, Pastor Vic and Joanne, Bonnie, Maggie, Dale, Joe, Ginger, Dave, Susan, Carla, Mike, Patricia, Nancy, Aaron, Bartley, Sam, Dorothy, Clara, Joanne, Kevin, Mary, Oline, Dolores, Doug, Betsy, Marion, Jean, and those that we lay before you, Lord, in our hearts and minds at this time. Lord God, bring healing according to your will and peace to those whose suffering endures. Thank you for all the work of doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals who work toward healing and restoration of wholeness. Guide scientists searching for cures for diseases that bring suffering to the world that their work might lead to healing for many. We pray, hear us, O coming Lord. O key of David, let your joy, forgiveness, and peace flow freely in and among the families of this congregation. Empower parents and grandparents to love their children, and children to love their parents. Watch over all who travel and comfort families who are separated by many miles. Guide families to be places where your love is demonstrated to strangers as well as to friends. We pray, hear us, coming Lord. O Lord of might, help us during this Advent season both to look back to those days when our salvation was won in your death and resurrection and look forward to the day of your return when, your power, when by your power you will bring the dead to life and restore all creation. We pray, hear us, O coming Lord. You, O Lord, Know the thoughts of our hearts and hear those prayers that come to you in sighs too deep for words. All our prayer we entrust to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with our blessing. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We pray together our Sanaf prayer. Knowing that the time is drawing near, may I, by your Spirit's prompting, support the mission and ministry of my church with my personal witness, my earnest prayers, and my sacrificial gifts. Grant that through me, many may be saved from the kingdom of darkness for the kingdom of your light. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord. Amen. We sing together our closing hymn, the king shall come 
when morning dawns. Once again, we thank you for worshiping with us in this day, uh, this week. Uh, as we say each week, we do pray as a source of joy and peace and blessing for you. Uh, just a few quick announcements before we close our time together. Uh, so as a reminder now that we are in the season of Advent, we do have uh, Wednesday evening uh, worship. And so uh, starting this week on uh, Wednesday night, we have uh, a dinner provided at 5.30 uh, in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, at 6.15, we'll be doing a congregation-wide service project. Uh, and then at 7 o'clock, we have our midweek Advent worship service. And we'll do that for the th uh, first three Wednesdays in December. Uh, as a reminder, if uh, you're not able to join us in person for those midweek worship services, we will be live streaming those. Again, you can access that on our, our uh, Facebook, or excuse me, on our website, Facebook page, or our YouTube channel. I also invite you to take a look through the What's Happening and see what's coming up here at St. John. Uh, so again, starting this week, so if you're uh, joining us live uh, here on Sunday morning, you can hop over uh, to join the Bible study. Uh, I'll be starting a new um, Bible study in the month of December, or I guess in the, the month of, or not the month, but in the season of Advent. Uh, we're going to look at the four key words of, uh, of Advent. So we're going to start with that word of hope and do a little uh, Bible study, a little scripture search on what that word hope means as we celebrate uh, the season of Advent. Also starting here this month, uh, we're doing a project to support Gideon's International called Birthdays for Jesus. And this is a way uh, to provide donations, to provide scriptures, to be distributed around the world. So there's more information you can find in here what's happening. And uh, even if you're not able to make it into the church, if you want to help donate, you can contact the office and we can help uh, make that happen. Also a reminder, next week, next Sunday, after our late service, is our 2021 annual meeting. So you can join either in person or via Zoom. Uh, and again, the link to uh, access that Zoom meeting is found in your What's Happening. So again, as we say each week, if there's anything that we can be doing for you, especially this time of year, uh, please let us know. But we pray that all is going well, and we pray that you have a wonderful day and a great rest of your week. We close at this time with the Lord's dismissal. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.